Gotham Knights is definitely one of those games where pretty much everyone knew from the first trailer that the game was going to be bad. And I think it would have had an easier time fooling people if it didn't come out a year after Marvel's Avengers, which is one of the worst superhero games ever. So when you see four superheroes, a multiplayer aspect, and gear and crafting components, it doesn't really put good faith in players. But I genuinely think that in a vacuum, the game's not bad at all. It's tricky when talking about superhero games, and Batman games especially, because they're all constantly compared to each other. I mean, the moment we saw gameplay for this game, we said, why doesn't it look as good as Arkham Knight, which... Yeah, I guess I can't blame you there. Especially when it's only on next gen and is locked at 30 frames and plagued with load screens for every mission in the game. But I don't know, I don't think it looks that bad. Personally, I like the art direction much more than in Arkham Knight and City. And I think this game focuses a lot more on making Gotham feel corrupt and ugly, whereas the Arkham games focus on making it look dirty and gross. Which is kinda cool, but I prefer this. I mean, there's like cool fog and smoke effects, so when you look at all the buildings in the distance, it genuinely looks very cool or like something out of a comic book. But then all the character designs look uncanny and not in a cool way. Robin looks like an iPad kid, Batgirl looks and sounds younger than Robin, which is not a positive. Nightwing looks like an edge lord, and Red Hood, actually Red Hood looks fine, I like Red Hood. Although it is worth mentioning that the streets are just way too wide to accommodate for vehicles and stuff. I know this was a problem in Arkham Knight, but geez. But it's still cool to not only be able to operate in a Gotham that actually has, you know, civilians worth saving in it, but the map in this game is also enormous. Something that Marvel's Avengers did that was really annoying was just have the story always happen in one of those generic maps that the online missions took place in. There weren't a ton of story-specific areas. Here, though, I would say nearly all of the linear stories and case files take place in mission-specific areas. I know that's like the bare minimum, but it definitely deserves credit, especially in tandem with a map this large. I'm also inclined to say that even though it's a little boring, the HUD and interface of this game is solid and pretty minimal, and I personally like it when games go out of their way to include a bunch of lore in the menu. There's emails between all the characters, tutorials, and lore on case files and parts of the city that you can easily miss if you don't go out of your way to check it out. And I think that's always cool. It's an easy way to add extra content and build on the relationships with the characters, while also making it easy to reference stuff you may have forgotten about. As for the gameplay loop of this game, it's not bad, but it depends on how you play it. There's a lot of cool ideas floating around that kind of clash with each other. First of all, there are pretty much always crimes going on around the city, which is a good way of maintaining that Gotham sucks pretty bad without just making it look gross like in the Arkham games. When you fight crime, you get an average of like 2000 XP and gear and stuff like that, but you also can fight and sometimes be ambushed by police and you don't get rewarded for fighting them. And I think that's cool, it maintains the narrative of corruption in the city. The issue is, once you pass like level 10, you do not get nearly enough XP for crimes. I found this out the hard way by grinding crimes for a few nights of patrols, leveling up maybe twice, and then I did a single mission and leveled up immediately. You don't get nothing for crimes, but it is by far better to just have the story be first priority. This is your reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. I personally really like the nightly patrol system. It's actually a pretty realistic way for the knights to operate, and it makes me feel more accomplished when I see how many knights I've done and a bunch of crimes that night, while also giving me an excuse to regroup at the Belfry, build gear, switch around some stuff, and maybe progress the story. But the combat itself is kind of mid going on bad. Again, in a vacuum, it's not bad at all. But the skills trees for the characters are definitely a little bare bones. They're not bad when fully unlocked, and when you have all the abilities, the combat's actually pretty fun but it does take quite a while to get there, meaning you go most of the game with mid-combat. By the time you reach the end, you're already a little exhausted anyway, I don't know. And one of the biggest challenges of having multiple characters is making them all feel distinct and worth playing as. I personally played this whole game solo, and I tried to play as Nightwing for the whole game, but I had to give up pretty fast. He's definitely the team leader character meant for a full squad. Red Hood is definitely the brawler character who also happens to have dual handguns. His gameplay is seemingly the most visceral and heavy, and again, I like his new design the most. Batgirl was the character I spent the majority of the game playing as. She's the more tech-savvy character while still doing pretty good work in combat, and she felt fun to me. And Robin has a huge focus on stealth and range. He's very much a ranger-type character with a glorified slingshot and a bunch of elemental focus. The game definitely does a good job of making sure the characters feel distinct and pretty fun, and if you do have a full squad, they're all useful in their own way. Batgirl's good at hacking stuff, Red Hood is good at taking down brutes, and Robin's good at sneaking around, I don't know. And Nightwing has a lot of abilities that buff the whole team. It also helps that when you get ability points, they're also given to whatever characters you're not playing as, so you don't have to just play the game again to use another character. Instead of having a single player game or multiplayer game that's really good, this game chooses to be a slightly worse combination of both. And I don't know whose idea it was, but I'll forever be upset that this game isn't cross-platform you guys had one job. The boss fights also strangely aren't bad at all. They're a pretty good spectacle that can definitely be a challenge, because for some reason you get a limited number of health packs in this game. I don't know why they did that, but it's fine. 
It's not something that's frustrating unless you're in a boss fight. But the fights themselves aren't bad except for the fact that they're almost all fights that don't feel like a situation where punching and kicking will help. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but Clayface and Mr. Freeze in a mech suit have never really been enemies where you just kind of square up and trade blows. In that, all the boss fights have the same way of defeating the boss, even if each one has different attacks and modifiers. There's like a couple of chases on Clayface's side, Harley Quinn uses a lot of smaller enemies to help her most of the time, Freeze has a ton of AoE attacks and the coolest spectacles in my opinion. The ending fight with Bruce Wayne was way, way, way too easy, and the one with Talia kinda was as well. And the man bat fights were fine. Three was a bit much, but but I think it would have been kind of cool if you could just stumble across a man-bat fight post-game, I don't know. Although the travel, I will say, is pretty bad. Nightwing uses a flying trapeze, which is decent, I guess, but it looks like a Fortnite glider, and I can't take it seriously even if it's technically the best one. Robin's slideways teleportation is cool, but it feels distinctly un-Robin and doesn't fit the character very well, along with feeling the slowest by far. Batgirl's glide is probably the best of all of them, but after playing however many hours of the Arkham games, it just doesn't compare. And then Red Hood is using, like, spirit energy. I don't know, it's really stupid. But the Bat Cycle is a good way to keep a consistent vehicle, between all the characters that can navigate a place as varied as Gotham. And then there's the weirdly implemented crafting system. Most other games that include things like this just include it as a way to implement microtransactions and skins and stuff, but all that stuff's free in this game. So they literally went out of their way to put this in the game by choice because they thought it would make the game better. And I'm actually kind of torn on it. It's really annoying at first, but once you figure out how it works, it's actually pretty easy to manage, and at the very least, it is a very good gear system, despite not really belonging in a game like this. Like, every time you buff your stats or equip a high-level mod chip, you can feel it the next time you fight, which isn't something I can say for Marvel's Avengers and some other games. Also, you get other suit styles and colorways by crafting suits, so even if you have a high-level suit, there's still incentive to craft some of the lower ones. That's good. But kind of coming back to the actual game itself, fighting a bunch of rogues and stuff is actually really cool. The best thing about Batman Arkham Asylum was the idea that it could just be a random classic Batman story. And then the next games kind of started to ditch that idea by killing the Joker and having Gotham be invaded by a militia controlled by a redesigned Red Hood. But this game kind of goes back to what Arkham Asylum tried to do and just makes it another story, albeit one where Batman's been captured. Spoilers, by the way. You fight the classic Penguin, classic Clayface, Harley Quinn, no Joker for some reason, and even Mr. Freeze. It also does something else better than Arkham Knight and City, which is have threats that are big enough to be important to the Knights and the rest of Gotham, but not important enough for the Justice League to need to intervene. The comics do stuff like this all the time, and I'm glad it was done realistically. Like, yeah, the Court of Owls is a dangerous secret society that needs to be investigated, but we're not calling Martian Manhunter for that. There definitely could have been more visits from other superheroes, but I think getting emails from Superman and people like that kind of makes up for it. As for the individual characters and narratives, the heroes are all decent. Obviously, the game is splitting itself into four different experiences to ensure that each hero gets their own way of dealing with what's going on. Red Hood's grappling with being resurrected and the Court of Owls trying to recreate a Lazarus pit. Robin's wanting to resurrect Bruce and fix all of his problems rather than just grieving properly. Nightwing's trying to be the team leader, but... <laughs> No one really likes him. And Batgirl's dealing with the legacy of her father after passing. These stories are okay. The biggest problem with these stories is that when the characters finally start to reach an understanding of Batman's death, he's not really dead anymore. So the story feels a bit pointless sometimes, but it's not bad, just a little strained between the four. And then storylines of all the villains are pretty standard. The Court of Owls is a little bland, but it's a story we haven't gotten much outside of the comics, so I guess it's good. But all the other villains are pretty much the same as always with tiny little twists. Penguin supposedly reformed, and this actually kind of holds true a little bit. Mr. Freeze actually cured his wife with Batman's help, but now she doesn't want to be with him, so he's kind of going insane. Clayface is, like, duplicating or something. I don't know. His story's kind of boring. It's kind of cool and provides little mysteries and new motivations around all the different case files and stories. This game doesn't really have the most story content, but again, compared to others, it's very serviceable, especially compared to Avengers. As for the actual open world, it's okay. There's not really a lot of incentive to actually explore other than to just fight crime in general. There's like batarangs and graffiti as collectibles, and I'm not gonna lie, they kinda suck. The incentive to collect them comes from what you get when you get all of them, but they don't give you much over time. It's alright, but it's pretty dull on that front, and I don't know for sure, but this game strikes me as a pretty long and dull 100% playthrough. But other than that, there's not much more to say about Gotham Knights. Again, the reason it failed is because, yeah, compared to other superhero and Batman games, it doesn't do very much better than those games. Besides Avengers, obviously, pretty much anything's better than that game. But it's interesting that this game wasn't even hated on release it was just crickets. No one really talked about it past day one, and obviously I made a lot of comparisons in my own video, but I don't know.
Gotham Knights has this weird, subtle charm to it. No, it's not the best superhero game you'll play, and no, you're probably not going to think that at any point while playing, but I was definitely pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it after a few hours. Even playing solo, it didn't feel like a waste of money or time. If you're a fan of the Batman Arkham games, I don't blame you for not liking this one. But I do think that this game is trying to be its own thing and does a few things better than those games, like having a normal version of Gotham that isn't completely abandoned for some reason or trying to balance a story that isn't just Joker again. Having side missions that feel like fully fleshed out stories, which is something that the Arkham games have always struggled with in my opinion. This game does at least a decent job of being its own thing, a fun, occasionally multiplayer experience with a decent looking open world, well done villains, without microtransactions or unnecessary DLC. I can really appreciate that in 2024. As for one of the bigger controversies surrounding the game, pretty much everyone knew that Batman was eventually going to turn up alive in this game, and they were right, but I kind of like it. I mean, functionally, Batman is dead for the entire game to all of the characters. He only actually comes back for about five minutes and gives the heroes a lasting goodbye before just dying anyway. He doesn't factor into the story at all other than his death inspiring the knights to form a team. So when he returns, it doesn't really undermine all that much and still allows the characters to get one last goodbye while not undermining their growth. It's kinda cool and still allows for the knights to grow past Batman, which is a plot thread that all of them share. So the story's good, the side missions are good, the boss fights are pretty good, the visuals are good sometimes, the characters are good sometimes, and the gameplay and traversal are pretty clunky, I'm not gonna lie. Throw a weirdly implemented crafting system and multiplayer aspect on top of all that and you get a pretty decent experience. I give it a 7 out of 10, it's really overhated and I'd recommend checking it out to anyone. Anyway, if you enjoy talking about superheroes and video games and stuff, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel, or not, that's fine. Play nice people.